Hi, I'm Patrick Gilbert, Senior Publishing Services Manager at Book Baby Publishing. For those who aren't familiar, Book Baby is a book printer and publishing services provider. We offer everything an independent author needs to go from a finished manuscript to a published book. And that's what we're here to talk about today. What's next after you've finished writing your manuscript? How do you publish? How do you get your book to market? Well, we like to break it down into five steps. The first is editing, finish your manuscript. And then design, turn your manuscript into a book. Third, production, turn your designed book into a tangible product. Fourth, distribution, make that book available for sale. And then fifth, marketing and promotion, telling your audience about your book. We'll take a look at all of these steps, touching on some important considerations at each stage, and also explaining why marketing is not really the last step because you'll be working on it throughout the process. We'll also talk about how long you can expect each of these steps to take. As for the entire process, your individual publishing journey may vary, but we've got a great six month publishing guide available on our site. That's a good general plan. You can find that at the QR code on the screen. For now, I've got two pieces of advice on timing. One, don't rush this. You wanna be sure your book is its best before going to market. And then two, once you're ready, the right time to publish is now. Don't worry too much about seasonality unless your book is specific to a season, a holiday, or a special event. Okay, let's get into it. The first thing to know about editing is that every author needs it. And every author who wants their best chance at success needs not just editing, but professional literary editing. That means somebody with experience, editing books in your genre, which likely excludes your sister-in-law who taught English. I'm sure she'll make a great beta reader, but you'll want a pro for your editor. And it definitely excludes you, the author. You are not an editor, unless you are, in which case you'll already know that you can't properly edit your own work. You won't see the mistakes or the flaws. You'll only see what you intended to write. You need a professional editor. Uh, the good news is they're not that hard to find. At Book Baby, we have a large network of experienced professional editors across all genres, and they're just a few clicks away. Professional editing is important because first impressions are important. An unedited or poorly edited book is going to turn off potential readers, likely need to lead to negative reviews and post-publication formatting changes. You don't want any of that. Now, there are several types of editing. Um, but really, fiction authors should focus on line editing. And I'd recommend following that with a final round of proofreading. You can read more about the different levels of editing in our guide, You Are Not an Editor. Now let's talk about timing for editing. Uh, how long the editing is gonna take will really depend on how long your manuscript is and how much work it needs you should plan to allow at least two to four weeks for the editing and another two for you to review those editor's comments and corrections and make any needed revisions. If you then do a round of proofreading, you're going to want to add another two weeks to that. Again, do not rush this. Now, what can we do about marketing at this point? While your editor is working on your manuscript, spend that time working on your marketing plan. If you haven't already done so, now is when you should be establishing your online presence and starting to share your journey. If you don't have a social media uh, author platform or, or an author website, now is the time to get started. Let your followers know when you've written the end and sent this thing off for editing. For more early stages marketing tips, I recommend you read Book Baby's Promote Then Publish Guide, which you can find on our website or by scanning the QR code on the screen. We'll make these links available again at the end of the video to make sure you can get them. Despite my mother's advice, everybody does judge a book by its cover, and they also judge it by its interior. I'm sure you all understand the importance of having a good book cover, but what you really need is a great cover that speaks to your audience in your genre. You need a cover with great design and typography that captures the essence of your story and the attention of your readers. Oh, and that cover also needs to be printable. The front cover is hugely important, 
and it's going to be the first thing anyone sees. But a book cover also includes a spine and a back cover and maybe a dust jacket. These elements have certain requirements, both from a design and marketability standpoint, but also from a technical print production standpoint. Not every graphic designer is qualified to design a book cover. A lot of freelance graphic designers or web designers not familiar with the intricacies of print. Even somebody who is experienced with print design may not have a true understanding of the components of a book cover or the optimal layout and style for your genre. This goes double for book interiors. Margins, pagination, front matter, citations, spreads, prepping for an eventual ebook conversion. A lot of authors overlook the interior design of their books. If you lay this thing out yourself in Microsoft Word or another word processor, it's going to show. You really should hire a professional book designer. You know how important your book's cover is at attracting readers, and the book's interior is equally important when it comes to retaining readers. Design is not a step you want to leave to chance. Please get yourself a professional designer. And that's definitely not as challenging as it might sound. At Book Baby, we've got an incredibly talented and experienced team of book designers. We have our authors fill out a design guide to help us understand the nature of their book, the audience they're after, their personal preferences around style and color. We even ask them to share uh, other covers they might like, uh, artwork that they want to uh, maybe include in the cover, or or just to have as a reference. Um, and then one of our experienced design professionals is gonna take all of that information and turn it into an engaging design that expresses the author's intent, communicates the book genre and mood, and appeals to readers. Now, let's talk about timing for design. How long does that take? Again, it depends, but it will go faster if you hire a professional, trust me. At Book Baby, we have the initial design proofs for both cover and interior back to the author in just one to two weeks. Now, each round of design revisions is gonna take another few days, and you'll likely wanna have a single press proof printed before you give final approval on the design. I'd recommend budgeting four to six weeks for the design process. Depending on your content, it could take as little as two weeks. But as with editing, you really don't want to rush this step. What can we be doing with marketing right now? Uh, do some research on your genre. What books uh, are your potential readers buying? What do they look like? Find those comparable titles. Start following those authors on social media and joining communities based around your genre. Oh, and once you have your final finalized cover design, Definitely start sharing that on social media and in any email marketing you do and just any chance you get. Now that your manuscript is edited and your design is done, the production phase can start. It's time to turn these designed files into a printed book and an ebook. Let's talk about print first. There are a few aspects of the physical book you'll need to decide on. Trim size, cover style, cover finish, whether you'll include any color in your book's interior, and the paper stock that your book's gonna be printed on. It may seem like there are a lot of print options out there, but really, you'll only need to make a few choices, and they're mostly dictated by your genre and audience. For your trim size, that's the final trimmed size of the book's pages, you should choose between digest, which is five and a half by eight and a half inches, and trade, six by nine inches. These are industry standard sizes. Unless you're doing a children's book, or cookbook, or an art book, you're gonna want digest or trade. As for the cover, you've got to do paperback at least, but both paperback and hardcover is ideal. Hardcover books are going to cost more to print and have a higher retail price than softcover books. Uh, if you offer both uh, the softcover and the hardcover, that's gonna give your audience two different retail price points to choose from. The paperback will likely sell better online, but a hardcover, maybe a signed hardcover, can sell very well at in-person events. Uh, with your covers, you'll have a choice of a matte or a gloss finish, that decision is mostly about your personal aesthetic preference, maybe what's popular in your genre right now. Now, what about color? If you don't absolutely need color inside your book, then skip it. Color is expensive. It increases your printing costs for author copies, and it significantly increases the retail price you'll need to charge for your book. Unless color is essential, stick with black interior and grayscale images. Uh, similarly, unless color is essential, you don't need anything fancy for your paper stock. You want a quality, uncoated 60 pound stock. Most fiction is traditionally printed on an off-white stock. Uh, a stark white stock might be better for nonfiction, business, and self-help books. One final note on print. Print quality matters, even for a novel. 
I recommend you get a physical press proof of your book before printing larger runs or going into distribution. If your reader's first impression of your book is that it's poorly printed or cheaply made, it's going to be a lot harder for your content to win them over. And that last point goes for ebook too. Uh, if you've ever struggled to read a poorly formatted ebook, you'll know it's an unpleasant experience. If you have a professional handle your printed book's interior formatting, they can prep that file to ensure a clean conversion to ebook that will look good and be readable and functional across all devices. With ebooks, the app and the user have a lot of control over the reading experience. So don't stress about fonts or spacing or margins or, or pages, since those things are really fluid in ebooks. Instead, just make sure you've got a clean manuscript, a professional designer, and an ebook conversion partner like BookBaby who will show you a proof of your converted ebook before it goes to market. Uh, now, what's the timing on this production stage? Uh, it's going to vary on two factors. One is how you handle that ebook conversion, and two is how many printed copies of your book you order for your launch. You should expect to allow one to two weeks probably for ebook conversion review and approval, and another three to 10 business days, so about two weeks, for book printing. Um, as far as marketing goes, think about how many of those copies you're going to need for your friends, for your family, but also for reviews, promotions, direct sales. Uh, you can always order more copies, but how many should you have at launch? Book Baby, we recommend starting with at least 100 copies to make sure you're covered for everybody who might need one and any opportunity you might have to sell one. All right, distribution, step four. First of all, let's make sure the terminology is clear and talk about what distribution means in terms of book publishing. Essentially, book distribution is publishing. Publishing is making your book available for sale to the public. Distribution is listing that book with all the different retailers and wholesalers so they can do that actual selling. It's getting your book on the online retail sites and in the wholesale catalogs, available to libraries and bookstores, and perhaps for direct-to-reader sales through your own website or through a store like the Book Baby Bookshop. If you want your book to be broadly available, you'll need distribution. There are a few ways to do this. One option is to handle it all yourself. You print thousands of copies of your book up front, store them in a warehouse, make arrangements directly with retailers, and then ship books when the retailers request them. Uh, with this method, you'll also need to manage all of the accounting and any returns. If you're looking for an extra full-time job with no pay, this is a great option for you. Now, assuming you have more important things to do, like, I don't know, writing more books or spending time with loved ones, uh, then finding a print-on-demand distribution solution is going to be a much better option for you. You can use a partner like BookBaby to list your book with all the retailers and wholesalers, to print and ship books directly to those resellers exactly when they need them, and to manage all the accounting and returns. BookBaby already has relationships with all the major retailers and wholesalers, a state-of-the-art print shop to fulfill orders from those booksellers, and an easy-to-use platform for managing your titles and tracking your royalties. The same is true for ebook. Ebooks are a little less complicated because there's no physical product to store or ship, but the options are essentially the same. Do it all yourself by setting up separate accounts with every ebook retailer out there, or use a partner like BookBaby to list your book everywhere people buy ebooks. Uh, working with BookBaby means you can manage the ebook in one place instead of all those different sites, and you earn the same royalties as if you'd gone straight to those retailers. You also have access to a support team for the life of your book's distribution. Now, regardless of how you choose to handle your distribution, there are three topics I think every author should consider. Those are royalties, returns, and Amazon. Now, royalties you like those, that's what you earn on a book sale after the seller's commission and the printing costs are deducted from the selling price. The retailer that sells the book, they're going to take a commission on that sale, and the wholesaler will take a commission on the sale to the retailer. Uh, it's how they stay in business. And assuming you're using a print-on-demand distribution model, the cost of printing the book also gets deducted at the time of that sale. Uh, the exact royalty an author will earn is going to depend on a number of factors, including the the size and page count of the book and the retail price they charge. But any trustworthy distribution partner should be able to tell you up front to the penny what you'll make when your book sells. To give you a ballpark estimate, traditional publishing royalties are between 5 and 7% on the first 10,000 copies. Self-publishing royalties vary, but typically range from 10 to 20% on print and 50 to 70% on ebook. 
cutting out the wholesaler and retailer and selling directly to readers is going to earn you the best possible royalties. Now, for example, BookBaby's direct-to-reader sales platform, Bookshop, pays 50% royalties on print sales, 85% on ebooks, and 75% on audiobooks. So that's a quick overview of royalties. Now a warning about returns. Now, book returns are a part of the industry. They happen, whether we like it or not. Uh, the average bookstore returns about 25% of the inventory they bring in. When a book's doing well, they fill up the shelves. And when the sales start to drop off, they send some copies back to make room for the next big seller. Um, make sure you find out how returns of your book will be handled by your distributor. Your book has to be listed as returnable if you want any bookstore to carry it. Some distributors will send authors a bill for returns, uh, including the original printing cost of the book and an additional processing fee. Uh, that can be a very unpleasant surprise. At BookBaby, all the books we distribute are listed as returnable, but we accept returns at no penalty to the author. And that can make a huge difference in your account balance over time. Okay, and finally, one last thing about book distribution, Amazon. Amazon is not enough. Yes, you need to have your book listed on Amazon. That's where a lot of your sales are going to take place. In our experience, about 50% of a title's print sales happen on Amazon. But beyond missing out on those other 50% of sales, listing on Amazon also really limits you in other ways. Uh, first off, listing your book directly with Amazon means no bookstore or library will carry your book. Seriously. It also means Amazon themselves will be printing every copy of your book. If quality matters to you at all, that will not be a good solution. They put more care into printing their boxes than into printing their books. You want to make your book available everywhere readers are. Using a professional distribution partner and full-service book printer, like BookBaby, means you're listed everywhere, including Amazon. And you also get the benefit of high-quality printing and dedicated author support. Uh, now for timing on distribution. It really only takes a couple of weeks for your book to be listed with all of the retail and wholesale partners. But you also need to allow for the pre-sale period. While your book is available for pre-sale, Amazon and other retailers are collecting data on pre-orders and page views to try to forecast the demand for your book. If a book is getting a lot of attention during pre-sale, the retailers will make sure to order plenty of copies to keep in stock. Uh, we recommend allowing 8 to 12 weeks for pre-sale. Now some marketing tips. Please set your release date only after production of the book is complete and after you've made all decisions about how you will distribute. I've known too many authors who've set a launch date and plan an extravagant launch party before they'd even approved their cover design. Don't set your actual release date until you've finalized the book's production. You'll be choosing a date two to three months out to accommodate your pre-sale, so you'll have plenty of time to plan that party. Hopefully you started your marketing work back at the writing and editing stages. You'll need to continue it now through the pre-sale period and the book launch and until you don't want to sell books anymore. Marketing and promotion is too vast a topic to cover thoroughly in the time we have, but these are the aspects and channels you really need to consider. Metadata, the information that's going to make your book discoverable and make your listing enticing. Social media, you've got to be where your audience is. Your author website can be a great hub for your writing, events, and other information. The email list, you've got to start collecting those emails and using that to your advantage. Advertising, expand your reach outside of your immediate circle. And then, of course, reviews, all important modern word of mouth. First, metadata. That's all the details about your book that's going to be used to build your retail listings, your title, your subtitle, your genre and subgenre, your author bio, your book description, and your search keywords. It's vital you get this information right to have a shot at success. Good metadata makes your book discoverable and entices readers to buy. Now, you know you'll need to be on social media, but that probably means having author accounts on multiple platforms, uh, though you'll likely want to focus on the platforms most frequented by your potential audience, whether that's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, or any of the others. Uh, an author website is a great place to keep track of all those social accounts and a place where you can consolidate information about events uh, and post supplementary content. It's also a great place to collect email addresses for your list. Even with all the social media options, the email list is still a very powerful tool for connecting with your core audience. Now, you're also going to want to run advertising. Advertising should still be a major component of your marketing mix. While you'll be communicating with your followers on the socials, 
ads give you an opportunity to reach a much larger audience of targeted potential readers. This is another area where it pays to use professionals. At BookBaby, our ad team writes great ad copy and does great ad design, but perhaps more importantly, they know what audiences are most likely to buy your book and how to target those audiences. So if everything works right, your ad gets lots of clicks, which lead potential readers to your book's listing, where they see your awesome book cover and read through your well-written book description, and they decide to take a chance on this new independent author. You got the sale. Hopefully that will lead to a review. <laughs> we all know how, how important reviews are and, and how tough they can be to get. We, we've got a really great article on our blog that covers all the different ways you should go about getting those reviews and, and sharing them with your audience. Uh, now, the biggest thing that I'd like you to take away from this discussion on marketing is that it takes time and effort to build readership, sometimes a lot of time. Keep at it. Keep sharing your book. Your number of readers is much more important than the amount of royalties you're earning at the beginning of your publishing journey. Get this book in front of as many people as possible. Okay, this has been a lot of information that there's certainly a lot of detail we weren't able to cover. And I'm sure you all have additional questions, as you should. Uh, publishing is a big, exciting, frustrating, thrilling, rewarding experience. At Book Baby, we want you to be well-informed when you embark on your publishing journey so that you'll have your best chance at success. To that end, we've got some really great resources for you on our website, including our uh, Promote Then Publish Guide, which I mentioned, also our Five Steps to Self-Publishing Guide, and our Six-Month Publishing Plan. We talked a little bit about timing throughout this, but that's going to give you a great overview of the general timing for the entire process. We've also got a blog packed with helpful articles uh, uh, on everything from writing through marketing. And if you're ready to get started now, we've got a team of knowledgeable, experienced publishing specialists who would love to talk with you about your project and how we can help you publish successfully. You can call them at the number on the screen or scan the QR code to schedule the call. Uh, they would be very happy to hear from you. Uh, so would I. So thank you so much for your time today, and we look forward to hearing from you soon.